today we will start another important ocular investigation you can see the diagram it is optical coherence tomogram now look at the name OCT O for optical optical for light then C for coherence so monochromatic light is used in OCT then T for tomography tomography means looking the tissue in cross section so OCT is a very important diagnostic tool in modern ophthalmology it is a non-invasive non-contact imaging technique to get high resolution cross-sectional images of the retina and anterior segment as well the process is similar to the B scan ultrasound except that light is used as a reflective source instead of sound OCT emerged as an investigation tool in 1990s the first generation OCTs were time domain as it is shown here in a false color printout now the time domain OCT has axial, axial resolution of 10 microns and acquired 400 A scans per second <clears throat> with a moving reference mirror now that's important moving reference mirror it used the actual mirror to acquire the scans that's why its speed war was limited then came the spectral domain OCT based on Fourier transformation of spectrometer analysis resolution was better 5 to 8 microns stationary reference mirror was used in Fourier technology and more than 20,000 A scans per second usually in the range of 27,000 to 70,000 A scans per second were taken so you can see here in a grayscale actual grayscale the spectral domain OCT now it's uh, another spectral domain but a bit with advanced version and high resolution so after spectral domain <clears throat> the latest comes swept source OCT now it uses longer wavelength 10 50 nanometer the others uses in the near infrared range 800 nanometer plus whereas in the swept source longer wavelength of 10 50 nanometer wavelength is used you can see in the diagram in the printout with improved visualization of choroid and sclera as well in the time domain and spectral domain the choroid and sclera was not very much visible because the penetration was up to 820 uh, nanometers where when the longer wavelength was used 10 50 nanometer then we were able to visualize choroid and sclera in more detail it also gave uniform image quality improved penetration in media opacities like a mild vitreous hemorrhage and even moderate cataract you can do the swept source OCT whereas in media opacities the time domain and spectral domain were highly limited and um, has a wavelength centered at 1 microns that sweeps across a narrow band of light source and to acquire the images of 5 micron axial resolution at 10 50 nanometer wavelength was used in swept source and it can take up to 2 lakh axial scans per second now it is presumed that it gives quantitative analysis of the thickness of the retina but it also gives you a qualitative analysis by describing shape and location of the normal as well as pathologic processes going on in the retina now axial resolution determines 
which retinal layers can be distinguished it depends upon the wavelength of the light source like, like from inner to outer retina we have got the vitreous then internal limiting membrane then nerve fiber layer then ganglion cell layer then inner plexiform layer inner nuclear layer outer plexiform layer outer nuclear layer external limiting membrane ellipsoid and myoid zone retinal pigment epithelium choriocapillaris large choroidal vessels and sclera on axial section whereas the lateral or transverse resolution determines accuracy with which size and separation of features such as drusen can be identified it depends upon the optics of the eye pupil size so that was all about the different types of OCTs their resolution and normally which layers will be at which point so in the next octs we will discuss pathologies thank you very much